This is Twit. Our smartphone mobile OSs are acquiring new privacy and security features, both behind the scenes, which is always a good thing, and also more visibly. Um, and they are, as a result, gradually becoming more secure. Um, and as I, I thought about the things we're going to talk about here, looking at useful user-facing features that Android and iOS have just added, Android 11 and iOS 14, um, it's easy to wonder why these features were not previously present. And I think the answer is that they do further complicate the user's experience by requiring more attention and engagement. Um, we'll talk about iOS new features next, but for example, iOS for, uh, I mean, we'll talk about, yeah, we'll talk about iOS in a second, but uh, one, one thing I deliberately didn't mention then is an iOS feature which places a tiny orange dot at the top of the screen to indicate that the application has previously been given and currently has permission to use the smartphone's microphone and camera. It's supposed to be sort of a, look like a recording indicator. It's not red, it's orange. Um, and given the original deliberately imposed simplicity of the Apple iPhone user interface, uh, there was certainly a time when notifying the user of this would have been considered noisy and unnecessary. The point is, that's clearly no longer true. The goal and desire to keep it simple has not diminished. But what has changed against the best interests of smartphone users is the nature of today's threat landscape. It is far more active than ever. So smartphone users need to get all the help that they can get from their OS. Okay, so to this end, we now have Android 11, which brings billions of its users, those who can upgrade, and all those who purchase Android 11 devices in the future, more control over their security and privacy than they've had before. And yes, it's unfortunate that such control is necessary, uh, but it's better to have it, I would say, than not at this point. And, you know, it's not like super intrusive anyway. Okay, so what's new in Android 11? Uh, One-time permissions. Android 11 get a useful feature that iOS has had for some time. Um, this allows users to grant apps single-use access to their device's more sensitive permissions, such as location, microphone, and camera. We're seeing variations of this on different platforms. For example, when a permission might be semi-permanent, users will be reminded after a while that such and such an app still has such and such a permission and asked whether they sh it, the app should retain it or not, which is, you know, sort of a nice compromise between immediately removing it and, uh, and sort of being kinder and gentler. Um, so Android 11 will now autonomously revoke permissions in addition to having this single use, Android 11 has the ability to autonomously revoke permissions for long unused apps. Um, it could be a bit of annoyance, though those permissions can always be regranted. But this is sort of part of working to keep the casual user more safe while attempting to minimize the impact of enforcing that safety. And in general, you know, we'll we'll be talking here about this notion of minimum required permissions, that, that's always a good idea. We've talked about how firewalls flipped from once blocking known problem ports to blocking everything and only opening the ports, which are known to be needed to have uh, to be open. Um, in what I think is a huge win for Android 11, the OS will also be getting incremental updates. Google has increased their plug and play stores integration on Android 11, allowing those devices to directly download and install critical OS security patches as modules instantly, just like an app from Google servers. We, we, we talked about the plan for this a long time ago, the idea that 
the, the OS would get modularized and the Google would not have to force, you know, th these would only be made available through the long OEM loop to, to, you know, a third party and hopefully to the end user, but rather be delivered as part of the app store, you know, much more like the Apple model has always been. And that's now here. So boy, I think that's a going to be a huge welcome improvement. Uh, and it would be, sure be nice for everybody to be able to get 11. I'm not sure, you know, how far back uh, 11 will be made available to earlier devices. But once you get there, you have a chance of being kept current, which is, you know, fabulous. Um, also, it tightens up an app's right to obtain location information when it's in the foreground versus moving into the background. We'll talk about iOS, which has done some interesting things uh, there as, as well. Um, when an app requests permission to access the user's location, Android 11 initially only grants foreground location permission. That is, you know, while the app is in use actively, if the app additionally desires access to location information while it's in the background, such apps will now be required to produce a separate and independent permission request. It's not all just lumped together into, you know, location services. And granting the permission is not as simple as quickly clicking, yeah, yeah, okay, whatever. No. Now, to enable background location access, users must go to a settings page and set an allow all the time option for the app's location permissions. And even to obtain such a permission setting, Google will now be requiring their app developers to explain why their app needs background location access at all. Just wanting it just because that's no longer going to be enough in order to get it. So a bunch of nice improvements in Android 11. Uh, it's clear they're all going to help improve user security, um, especially, you know, the from the store OS updates, which I just think that's going to make a, a world of difference for so many for the security of so many Android users.